Hello and welcome, my name is Sebastian, I am the creator of Moby Flight and I'm really excited as you can tell about the latest uh, release, the latest iteration of Moby Flight version 9.7 that I'm going to release today together with this video. So it's a release packed with f new features and cool enhancements and also bug fixes and I'm pretty sure that by the end of the video you are going to be as excited as I am. Uh, so let's Let's take a closer look. Before we start with the review, I would really like to say thank you to everyone who actually made this release possible. That is you guys, the Mobiflight code contributors, who decided to dedicate their time and help me with coding the software. It's you guys, the Mobiflight supporters and uh, sponsors who are backing the project with their monthly or one-time uh, donations. It is you guys, the Mobiflight moderator team, who are doing an outstanding job on the Mobiflight Discord server and on the Moby Flight forum. And obviously, it's also everyone else of the Moby Flight community who is sharing, participating. You all and your feedback is my motivation for making sure that Moby Flight keeps improving again and again. The first new thing is that MobiFlight now has an official installer. This is a really cool new feature, especially for those who are installing MobiFlight for the very first time. The installer takes care of making it very easy, just a couple of clicks, and then you have your desktop shortcut icon, you have it inside of the MobiFlight, uh, you have it inside the programs folder, and obviously, for the very unlikely case that you ever would want to uninstall Moby Flight again, there is also an uninstall option. Moby Flight now has an auto scan feature, and that is simply amazing. Assigning an input has never been easier. When configuring an input action, simply activate the scan for input mode and uh, use your desired button, encoder or analog input, MobiFlight will now use it for your configuration. This obviously also works for the joystick buttons and axis. MobiFlight now has an even improved stepper support. It's a real big enhancement for Steppers. We reworked the firmware thanks for, uh, to Ralph and we also reworked the UI. Now the Stepper support is so much smarter. MobiFlight now has native support for full step and half step mode and also drivers and it comes with backlash compensation. And it also has an option to disable the coil when the Stepper has reached the final position. You also now have the option to set the speed and the acceleration value use on config level, which allows you to fine tune your stepper for your specific application. If you are already using steppers, you will see that they can turn now much faster. For the popular 28BYJ stepper, we can see a speed improvement of up to 100%. Currently we have some static stepper profiles prepared for you and I plan to make that also configurable so that we can share different presets. The first great news is we added X-Plane support to HopHop where we can now collect X-Plane presets also for X-Plane add-ons like we're doing it for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Thanks so much to Rolfler for his awesome engagement in development of HopHop platform and helping me make that happen. Also big shout out to Tiger T and Chris UT who collected presets for the first add-on, the 737 Zebo mod, which is extremely popular among MobiFloid users. This leads to the next related feature. Since we added X-Plane presets to HopHop, MobiFlight can now also update the X-Plane presets inside of MobiFlight. At the same time, I also improved the download of the events. The legacy format is not downloaded anymore by default, since it's not used by MobiFlight anymore, and this saves most of the users some time. Users who for some reason still rely on the events text, they will now find a dedicated menu option to download those presets. 
With MobiFlight 9.6, the last version, you might have noticed that internally MobiFlight is now using floats. Seven segments now can display float values natively without having to define the decimal point in the config anymore. This is cool and works in most of the cases really, really well. In case you have trouble with this new behavior, you can always revert back to the old way by converting your float value into an integer value. I'm curious to see how you guys like this new way of dealing with decimal values. I hope especially for MobiFlight starters, this is going to feel a little bit more natural to them. There are situations, especially with actual switches, that your cockpit can get out of sync with the sim. So your physical switch is in one position and the switch in the sim is in a different one. For this, MobiFlight provided a feature for a long time that allowed you to resync your button and the switch position in the sim. You could re-trigger this resync with a specific input action. Now MobiFlight will simply execute this retrigger for you whenever you put MobiFlight into run mode. This way your physical switches should always be in sync with the switch position in the sim. If for some reason you would like to disable this behavior, you can also do that in the settings dialog. MobiFlight comes with more user-friendly labels for the honeycomb buttons and the honeycomb levers. This is actually something which we're going to build out with the next release. We have already pull requests so that we are going to be able to create joystick profiles and it's going to be very, very easy to check what assignment you currently have. An exciting addition to the family of supported boards is the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is a 100% community contribution. Kudos to LRAL66 aka Ralph and Neil aka Neil. The Raspberry Pi is a modern microcontroller with a lot of RAM and a speedy CPU at a very good price point. MobiFlight now has additional support for the Arduino Nano, basically a smaller version of the Uno. This is nice because the Nano is quite popular, it's small in size, but also practically has the same limitation as the Uno does, which overall is a limited uh, memory. And then there's a bunch of improvements in 9.7 that I would like to talk about. The first two improvements on the list are related to each other. You can now check and see the configuration of a device even though that it is not connected at the moment. This works for all device types now on output configs and the input configs. And this is really helpful for sharing configs with others, for example, also to learn from others or help to troubleshoot. MobiFlight now displays a confirmation dialog to make sure that the user understands that a board reset really wipes all data from the board. The log levels have been updated so that the levels debug, info, warning and error really show the appropriate messages. The default level is info and this allows you to see all the input action events and only for more advanced stuff you would have to switch to debug. MobiFlight now checks for the new version on startup very early in the process so that we can make sure that if by accident there is a bug introduced very early during startup process, we still have a chance to download a fix from the internet. And the last improvement that I really want to highlight is that the input tab now on the input config wizard is in first place. Every time that you create a new config, it will be the first thing that you see, which definitely makes sense. And then there is a long list of bug fixes that made it into the release. Thanks for reporting your issues on GitHub. That really makes it easy for me to keep track of everything. There are some more changes that are development related. Now this concludes my release review video for version number 9.7. I hope it provides you an idea of how much effort, work and dedication went into this release. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, provide your feedback in the comment section, let me know how you like this video and the release 9.7. Hope to see you soon on the forum and on our Discord server. Stay safe and all the best for your MobiFlight projects.